Who won the battle of the sexes? Well, all this week, we've been asking whether it's better to be a man or a woman in today's Britain. And uh, was it a score draw, do you reckon? Uh, it's uh, your call subject this morning. We had International Women's Day earlier in the week. Do we now have sexual equality in the UK? Julie Bindle, journalist and feminist campaigner. Do we now have sexual equality in the UK? Absolutely not, and I'm afraid we don't have it anywhere in the world. And if you look at the global picture, rape, domestic violence, child abuse, sex selection, forced marriage, um, are all issues that affect women in various countries around the world, including the UK. And if we look here, it's not just about equal pay. It's not just about who has maternity leave. It's actually about the fact that women cannot be free citizens on a par with men if sexual harassment in the workplace is still acceptable and if sexual violence and the threat of it is still very prevalent in our lives, which of course it is. Why are men so much more capable of these terrible things, sexual violence, sexual predation and uh, sexual abuse than women? Well, you know, we're all born babies, not bad or good. Um, and the it's, issue it's, is it's all conditioning, is it? It's all conditioning. It, it, it's, it's totally one of, of, of social conditioning. It's one of, you know, men, whether advertedly or inadvertently, consciously or not, keeping hold of the power they have, refusing to let go of it. And one of the ways that they do this, whether or not they're conscious of it, whether or not they're good uh, or not so good men, is by threatening us with violence and with abuse. And we know that if we step out of line, then there'll be a punishment. Now, that sounds extreme. And I know that many women have very equal and good relationships with men. It sounds like a little bit know, of a generalis generalisation, Julie. Of course it is, because we're talking about men and women, and we yeah. can't speak about specifics. It's exactly the same as if you look <laughs> excuse me, at the situation... Uh, in terms of race in this country. We know that there are many good white liberals who wouldn't dream of, of thinking a racist thought, let alone carrying out a racist act. But we know that if you look at it across a level playing field, white people have more power in this country, in the market and socially, than black people do, um, you know, w without question. Who's got it worse, a black man or a white woman? Well, I think that's a very interesting question, and I think that what you have to look at is certain circumstances in which, of course, a white woman would have power over a black man. But if you look generally across the board, because race involves men, um, and actually sex doesn't, you know, the, the, the kind of sexual discrimination that women receive is very specific to us, we can say that racism is taken far more seriously. It's a far more heinous crime to be accused of racism than it is to be accused of sex. We, we had Stephen Whittle on earlier on, who is a, a female to male. He's transgendered. Mm -hmm. and he, 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 was, he, he said, he rightly pointed out, he was born a baby, but he was te technically speaking at the time, I suppose, a, 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 girl, a girl. He always felt like, felt like he was a boy. And he says testosterone is the most amazing thing. He, it's, it's, he hardly ever cries. He he, if he doesn't take his testosterone, he, he really knows about it. He gets down. It said it's an incredible thing for focusing. He hardly ever cries now. It's given him great focus in his life. It doesn't cry at films and stuff like that, unlike, unlike some of us. But do, do you think testosterone is a curse or a blessing? Well, you know, I think it depends. It depends on, on on the individual, and I think that what what Stephen has said, whom, whom I know and like, but what he said is a terribly old-fashioned way of looking at gender. You know, the assumption that women cry, women are more emotional, and it just needs a shot of testosterone to actually put us into the kind of logical. But, but we had, but we had, ju we had, we had, we had Juliet Jack on, who is uh, has gone the other way and is now a woman, and she was saying she has, she feels, and I've had a couple of texts from other transsexuals, feels a much greater range of emotions now that she's taking, uh, they're taking female hormones. Well, you know, maybe I should give it a, a whirl and take give, some... Give it a whirl, Julie. Go on, give it a whirl. If I start wanting to kind of mince around in high heels sobbing <laughs> at films, because I think it is all a social construction, and I think if you do actually take a disproportionate amount of hormone that, that you know, your body is not actually used to, then it can, it can bring about all sorts of changes. But I don't believe there's something innate about, uh, about being a woman, and I don't believe there's something innate about being male. I think that we're socially constructed to act out a part that's suitable to keep men in positions of power. <clears throat> Thank you. It's always uh, a very stimulating and interesting talking to you. It's better than a, a pile of testosterone, Julie. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we're asking the question this morning, uh, is there now sexual equality? If there was a battle of the sexes, who won it? Stephen leads straight out the, uh, the traps, and Tom in Liverpool, and I'm delighted to welcome Beatrix Campbell, a feminist academic writer and journalist. Hello, Beatrix. Hello. Hello there. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Great. Really good. Um... So, do we now have sexual equality? <laughs> do you know, I have to laugh when, uh, when I'm asked this question. It's absolutely obvious that we don't. You know, you go to the 
bleeding edge of our economy, the finance sector and the IT sector. And the pay gap there between men and women is 55%. I don't call that equality. Do you? A lot of women, of course, take career breaks, don't they? It's got nothing to do with it. It's to do with what equivalent men and women earn mm. and what women take home in that industry as compared to men. Mm. Why is that happening? Everybody knows what? that there is... Uh, that there is a pay gap that has huge consequences for women in their older years, for example, their pensions, and there's no good reason for that pay gap other than that historically women were paid a women's rate. It's taken 40 years or so to try and escape from that tradition, um, and men were paid uh, very often, actually, for being men. I mean, this is something that was touched on earlier on by mm. um, Julie Bindle. She says it's all social, social conditioning, that men, because of the structures of society, uh, are, are more prone to violence, are more prone to, to being abusers. Is, is, it in, is it something innate or is it in conditioning? Is it something, is it sort of testosterone gone bad? Why does that happen? I don't, <clears throat> I think what's interesting about the feminist position on all of this mm. is that we're much less pessimistic about men and masculinity often than than men are themselves. I think one of the things that we have to take really seriously is that there is a presumption that men will be violent. I have a little grandson of two. You wouldn't believe the number of T-shirts that, that refer to havoc, chaos, being a little soldier, violence, wild cars, flames, the whole shebang. Just go into mother care any morning of the week and you will see an astounding set of assumptions built into the very clothes that we put on to our children. Girls are princesses and boys are wild. But I wanted to play cowboys and have guns and well, toy guns you know, when I was a little boy. I wanted to play cowboys. Everybody in our street played cowboys well, and Indians. What's wrong with that then? Nothing, Nothing at all. No. Um, what I think is important here is mm. that there is an assumption of violence associated with boys. Oh, interesting. Let's bring Danny and Barnett and Tom in Liverpool. Danny, do you want to speak to Beatrix? You make some interesting points. I don't think you might agree with them, Danny. I completely disagree with her. I think she's completely misguided with her views, and I don't so you think, think she knows herself. you think men are violent, do you? I think you're completely... Which, you're which, which, which views, Danny? Just uh, highlight what, which, what, view, which views, and then I'll come back to you, Beatrice, and we'll bring Tom in. Which views are misguided, Danny? Uh, basically, women have got a lot more rights than men at the moment. Women have everything in their favour. Like what? Absolute, like what? You go to your local public services, there's women hours swimming, Women's hours gym. Why? Where are the men's only hours for swimming? Where are the men's hours only for, for the gym? Why is it that women can take off whenever they want off work for family needs with no problem and expect the same pay? You try and, as a man, take off work for any family needs, it's much harder. And you can't even complain this, um, unfair because they say it's a woman's duty. Okay, Danny. Women uh, can't uh, expect everything to go in their favour. Oh, you make your point. Tom in Liverpool, you come in as well, then we'll, go, we'll, we'll throw it back to Beatrice. Tom. Hello, uh, Tom. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I, um, I, I, I agree with Dan. Um, I think that uh, the, the, the women always seem to, women seem to want to everything their own way, and uh, it really winds me up. Uh, I think, think, think the lady was on before, I think her name was Julie Bindle. Yes. Um, well, she, she, she was a classic case of, uh, of, of wanting everything her own way, and, and uh, the, the, that, that, that lady may be right about, 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 the, about the pay differences in the boardroom, but... Most of us don't don't live in the boardroom. Most of us have normal jobs, nine to five, and our, our pay is, is is equal. Now, I'm sorry, but 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 she can go on about uh, about but she can go on about aggression and violence and guns and what have you in, in play. Uh, but uh, I just think it's 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 an excuse. I I, I really do, and it, it, that lady wound me up so much that uh, that it I. I oh. Oh. I'm still wound up now. I'm really sorry, but... but I, I, cal 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 I, cal cal calm down, Tom. Wound. It's all right. You're expressing yourself very well. Beatrix, uh, th th you know, th there's a lot of guys coming up doing jobs are feeling pretty resentful about this, you know. Do you know what? The, the, the point about pay is this. Think about uh, an, uh, a long, 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 extremely expensive equal pay case brought against Birmingham Council, the biggest single local authority in Europe that was paying men who, it is agreed, do the same kind quality of jobs as men mm -hmm. up to 50,000 a year and the women are getting 15, 18,000 a year. The equal pay problem is not resolved in Britain and if you want to be a man 
who support common sense, who support women. As you said, the women and men who are doing the ordinary jobs look at the statistics and do something about it and say, I don't support equal, unequal pay. The pay gap in the city has been so concerning to the Treasury Select Committee that they've had investigations into it. And one of the reasons that the pay gap in the city is so massive is because this is not just at the top level, this is absolutely routine. There's no opportunity to do uh, collective bargaining. There's wage secrecy. There aren't any unions virtually in, uh, in the City of London and the finance industries. And that's why you've got these massive inequalities. I don't know what you're getting wind up Winded, wound up by us for we're the ones who are saying that it's the culture that produces the polarizations between men and women Tom, it's do you want to come men are bad do you, do you, can I come in here? I'm Steve from Leeds. Yeah, I'll come back to Tom in a minute. I'm just worried about him because he was exercised and he was all yeah. sort of very angry. Are you, are you feeling any better, Tom? No, I'm not wound up. Oh, no, uh, n n it's okay, I'm fine. Can okay, can well, I'll come back to you in a minute, Tom. Steve, you come in here with <laughs> your, your measured may, point, may, Steve. May I speak? You may speak. I was just checking on Tom's well-being. No worries, yeah? no worries. Yeah, Go on. Yeah, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm an employer. I, I own a company. And I pay my employees male or female the same rate good i respect the girls if i may call them that am i allowed to call them that they're, you, they're fantastic you know employees they're, fa they're fantastic they they work hard the boys work hard everyone works hard i work hard but at the same time absolute respect and likeness and 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 uh, and, and and love if, if if that's the right word for all, for all the people who work for me. Is there anything wrong with that? No, that's lovely. Right. Um, and uh, uh, we're a growing company. We're, we're working hard. We're, we're going through difficult times like everybody is at the moment. Steve, do we have equality in the workplace? Are men and yeah, women now equal? Equality, absolutely. If, if there's ever any inequality in my company, the person that is, is, is causing that inequality will be summoned to my office and uh, there will be problems. Steve, that's as it should be, isn't okay. it? Okay. No, I agree uh, with you. That's absolutely uh, as it should be. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we, are, we are doing our best to, to create a business, to, to, to help families, to help people who want to work with us and who want to cooperate. What's wrong with that? OK, Tom, um, do you, that's a, a, an excellent, excellent call, Steve. Tom, thank do you. you feel, like some people do, that there is a kind of... Uh, men are in crisis? Um, at times, yeah. I, um, I mean, I, 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 I applaud Steve. I, 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 I applaud Steve. He, he, he sounds like a, like a, 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 a good employer. I, I, I work for, for a great employer, and uh, everybody is equal. Um, so, and I have no, 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 no problems with that. The, 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 the problems, the problems I have is, is, is when you have, have uh, you know, there are some women, uh, like, uh, like our, our friend Julie. Who, who who comes on uh, uh, and spouts that that, that 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 things are unequal when on on the ground uh, normal uh, uh, everyday life most most workplaces I, I I've found with the, the the places I go uh, most places women are, are, are treated uh, entirely equally mm. uh, in, in, in fact in, no, no, other times uh, you, you mentioned earlier that the, that the women tend to have uh, excuse me <coughs> uh, have, have more time off. Um, for you know, for, for for one reason or another, and 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 they're, they're, they're treated entirely equally, and I think it's it, 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 I think it's just uh, annoying when 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 they come on and say you no know, in the in the boardroom in this and in that, and it, 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 it may well be true, and you know it is true. It, it, well, well, well that, that's fine, that's fine, and I, and I hope it, it it's sorted out, but. Well, let's start looking at normal working class people, normal normal people who, who, who get are. up in the morning and, uh, and go to work. Because all are. those people are equal. But we are, you see. The thing that I think is so cruel about this, um, let me tell you, I did a story on uh, a group of women who had been unequally paid in the health service in Cumbria, Whitehaven and Workington, all of their working lives. They, they took an equal pay case that was extremely arduous. They won. And some of those women, for the first time, were able to save, were able to get the guttering sorted out. Well, is, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, and like, the reason I'm saying this to you is because you're right. For working class women, this is really, really important because they're paid the least well and they're the ones with most responsibilities 
on the planet. So they're the ones who really matter in this conversation. And they're the ones that I'm worried about. And they're the ones who have to, who actually have to shoulder all of the responsibilities and get least acknowledgement for it. So we, what we do know is that they are not paid equally. The statistics year after year are showing us that the equal pay battle basically has stabilised. All right, it, I want to ask you as well. It's just gone level. Nothing is happening. I want to ask you in a minute if, if you can stay for a couple of minutes about this, this, this supposed crisis in, in masculin masculinity, if I can say it properly. Okay, okay. We'll, 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 we'll come to Tim in Pontypool as well. Thanks for the calls. More please, 0500 909 Who won the battle of the sexes? And I'm delighted that Beatrix Campbell joins us, the feminist academic writer and journalist. And, uh, and Jay in Birmingham, to whom we'll speak to. Hello. Morning, Jay. Oh, hi. Good morning. It's just a very quick call. Listen, I'm sitting here listening to this, and I have to say that I feel very sorry for some employees these days, some employers these days. You know, I have to say that I don't want such a radical feminist talking on my behalf. She does absolutely not reflect the majority of women, and her comments on violence and punishment in a discussion on sexism in the workplace are absolutely inappropriate. Which which which, which feminist are you talking about? Are you? Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't get her name. The woman who was talking about violence and punishment on women who you know don't behave themselves when. Is that earlier on? Was that Julia Bindle? Was that before nine o'clock? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's really just one very final point because we're, we're all, I, I've got a dash. But um, my husband, I have to say, has absolutely been subject to being managed by re completely incompetent women who have been promoted above male colleagues purely to satisfy quotas in the workplace. Now, we, we're all very grateful to the very early feminists who did you know, fantastic work in enabling us to get the vote and equal pay. But these, those days, they did not have such positive discrimination. And I think that let's reflect that and let's not forget that, that, that women do sit pretty well these days. So really, that's all I just wanted to point out. And if we're going to have a discussion on this, don't bring in things like violence and punishment uh, and, and how awful women get it, because we really don't. We have it very, very good these Majority. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Beatrice Campbell, Thanks. we have it very, very good these days. We have days. it very, very good. Well, that's very interesting because you know what happens every time a woman has a child? Across her earning lifetime, she loses around 140000 across her, life, uh, her lifetime. She can expect... Well, she gains much more, doesn't she? Quarter, well, she gains a child, but so does a man. Um, and, you know, the, the point about this is that the way that we organise how we earn a living wage and how we organise our domestic life means that women always lose economically. I think the thing that we need to sort out is very basic things like why do we work the longest hours in Europe? Because the effect of that means that men's relationship to their children at the very time when they're really, really needed is that they're rendered kind of visitors in their own homes because they're working such very long hours. The woman who was just talking now, yeah, we've got it better, but we haven't got it equal. By no measure have is we Is there got a crisis equal. in masculinity? Well, I'm waiting to see what it is. Are men having nervous breakdowns because, they're, because there's something intolerable about being a man? Are men's relationships with women worse than they ever were? My experience Do men understand any more what they actually they're feel that their relationships with women are probably better than they've ever been in the history of humans. Do some men have a problem understanding what their role is anymore? Do they? I don't know. I'm asking you. Have you heard this? Have you heard tell of this well, anyway? I've heard tell of it, but I don't yeah. know any man who's actually you know, ailing from this, what is their role to be a human being? Chris and Didcot. Take care of their children, to be nice to women. I don't know what's difficult about that. Chris and Didcot, do you want to come in here? Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I've, I've thought of a couple of points since I came in. I just want, want to talk about sexual harassment. It's a quick one, if you would. Yeah, you, you go any any place where there's lots of women, and you get young some young boy goes into that factory or, 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 or location and see the sexual harassment that he gets... It is. It is awful. That the, the, they they really want to make him feel small and inadequate. And it's them. Is it? We've been getting their own back. I don't know. Well, maybe they've been learning some very bad lessons from men. No, no. So. Well, I mean, what, I don't want to them, and I think sexual humiliation is horrible. And I I think that's something horrid in the culture that encourages that kind of thing. I mean, whether it's women doing it to men or men doing it to women. Even horrible. In the film uh, Dagnan, which was about 
yes, the right that. for equal pay. You, you watch that and you see yeah. the, the, the young boy being sexually abused by the women in, in, the, in the factory. Yeah. So, I mean, you... Yeah. So now you're admitting we, we're both the same. We, we take... If, if we, it's not nice. Don't, don't like it. It's humiliating. I agree with you. Beatrix, thank you so much for coming on this morning. Christian did call as well. Um, back to our discussion. Jim's in Sheffield. David is in London. Um, Battle of the Sexes. Jim, um, what, what do you think about what you've heard so far? Well, yeah, first of all, I would like to say that people like B. Campbell and Julie Bindler are wonderful people. I'd like, just like to start that. I followed their work. Uh, they should be in positions of uh, great power, really, to, to change things. A lot of people I, I are quite. Their work. A lot of people, Jim, are quite wound up by what Julie yeah, said about that, male yeah. violence um, being part of male conditioning, and right. and and uh, B uh, touched on that as well. Um, a lot of men feeling very defensive. Um, I think it's uh, it's a default situation for men to feel defensive because they. They don't seem to be able to um, translate uh, an understanding, an empathy with certain situations that uh, have been discussed in the show today. I spend a lot of my time now going around the country working with social care workers who are desperate to engage with fathers, uh, particularly fathers who are at the vulnerable end of social care work and it's an uphill battle it's an uphill battle with ice and a uh, challenge and uh, really really difficult um, men who really don't want to know um, and uh, those sort of men we desperately want to help and help change but in a more general context um, men, and uh, a lot of blokes aren't going to like this, and there are one or two blokes who are really wound up uh, on the radio. They're probably going to end up kicking the table, but men have got to think about, seriously, about looking at themselves and thinking about change. And, and just a couple of other very... How, OK, let's, let's address that. How should we change? OK, we need to think about um, men globally... Uh, and what men do globally in the world and the power and control that men have globally and also on an individual level what men do really and some of that is very very unpleasant reading um, but I want to just move on a little bit to say where are the books that help men change the nearest we've got let, let, let me just give you an illustration I've got a book in front of me called the Dane how can we change when we've got all this testosterone it's, it's in our natures isn't it to be a certain uh, way yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not going to be wound up by you with that one. You know, that's, that's <laughs> what? Absurd, Would really. I do such a thing? I don't know. Uh, you tell me. What? But uh, you look on the bookshelves and look for books for boys to think about change, that men and, uh, and women who try and parent them can try and help them change. And the nearest, the best-selling book in the last five years is The Dangerous Book for Boys. That's what we've got. Nostalgia. Um, it's a great book. It, it, it's it's a book that doesn't help young men who might be sitting on the stairs listening to their parents arguing or fighting. It doesn't help young men try and process emotions. What it does is actually takes them out of that context and gets them doing things like reading about the best battles that there have ever been, the laws of cricket. Or football. You know. What's or football. But, but this, that's good, fascinating stuff. It's okay. It's absolutely fine. I like football, but it doesn't dominate my life. D and do you think? It, do you, uh, this is interesting. Do you think there's an extension in some people? I've heard this theory that you know people who cling on to, you know, kind of adolescent support of a football team throughout their lives. It's a kind of extension of adolescence. It's an extension of the certainties of adolescence in in, in boys. Um, I think it's all taken a bit too seriously kicking a bit of lever about around a football pitch and the the level of obsession that it's taken to but i don't want to get it you know a lot of people get a lot of fun out of it and i don't want to decry that i want to bring or peter in I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back yeah. to you because you've yeah. had a, you've had a fair shot and i would like, yeah, it's, i want to encourage dialogue okay. that's what i do it's a, in a, a, a that's that's always a good thing peter in wad shelf did you hear what jim's been saying it's been fascinating we need to change peter men need to change um, well look i Probably that's the case. I'm sure we could all benefit from a bit of change, but I didn't quite the I wanted to make. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly say that there was uh, there was a pension, lady was mentioning earlier on women when they have a child, they can financial it, it's very substantial financial it. And I'm fairly sure that the 
case, but the problem that I have is the bloke. It's my job to go out and work and provide during the 12 months that, uh, that she'll take off to look after uh, the kids. Uh, so I have no choice but to earn more than, uh, than her for that period. And now it seems that I'm supposed to feel guilty about that. But the ultimate contradiction then comes in that if the relationship then breaks down, there's a presumption in law that the kids will go with their mum. Why? Because that, and in that circumstance alone, we assume in law that you have to be female in order to be a primary carer for the kids. Mm. I don't think we have to address some of these contradictions. That's, a huge, that's a huge issue. Uh, very, very much. Ray in Birmingham. Good morning, Ray. Morning. I'll come back to you in a minute, Jim, um, because uh, you're... you're uh, Getting a lot of people thinking, a lot of interesting things. Um, Ray, on you go. Well, it was just that the, uh, the earlier lady who was talking, uh, seemed to be concentrating far too much on the question of the pay in ladies' pay. Uh, I mean, it may, we've come an awful long way uh, in that area, and I think most employers now agree that uh, people who do the same work deserve the same sort of pay and, 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 and conditions. Uh, but, but... Life is not all about money and not all about pay. And uh, if you take overall, the um, ladies generally uh, are pretty damn equal. There are differences, of course, there are. They have their time off to have their children. Uh, well, my daughter's not long had a baby, but her, her husband now, I think, three weeks paternity leave. Um, but, uh, you know, they get lots of other uh, things that, that make them quite equal in, in, in life in general. Okay. As, as, a, as a guy said earlier. Thank you. Women only swimming, women only gym sessions. There we are. Thank you very much, Ray. Jim, can you stay with us a minute? Because I think what yes, you're saying is fascinating about our need to sort of address um, our social conditioning, in a sense. That's your argument, isn't it? Um, my, well, let, let me just give an illustration. Well, can you give um, an illustration after the travel news? Yeah, go on then. And anyone else, <laughs> anyone else who doesn't think that men should change, feel free to call and discuss this with Jim. 0500 909 693. Jim's in Sheffield, Davies in London, Rob's in Stockport. Right, what, what's the example, Jim, you're going to tell us of how men yeah, need I'd to like change? I'd like to give an example of yeah. uh, new fathers I've been working with. Right. And uh, one of the pieces of work we do with new fathers is to ask them about their own experience of being fathered. And uh, what, what, what we find interesting about that is how many men are so, so very upset about the fact that uh, they look back at their own fathering with great despair. You know, they're, they're, they're their own fathers who didn't give them what they wanted, really. And it's very, very sad, you know, that... Um, what, what did they want that they weren't given? <laughs> they wanted emotional contact. Or cuddles, in a, hugs? In a positive or... way. They wanted fathers to be um, more than just a figurehead, more than a detached person. And we often think that, well, actually, men have uh, changed quite a lot, and they aren't um, the remote sort of Victorian caricature that we often think of. But when you ask new fathers um, what they want to do uh, as they're becoming a new father, they often say, I want to be different, a different sort of father to the father I experienced. Isn't that just a natural human thing? As well? However good my father was, I want to be, you know, even better. Isn't that just the thing that people would say? The thing, I don't think I, so. I want to be the I don't perfect think so. father. There's a lot of emotional uh, resonance in a lot of men in that those groups I run, and um, what they want is fathers to be attentive, fathers to be there, fathers not to get angry with them. Jim, um, apologies for that. Thank you very much for bearing with us. You're saying some... Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. Oh, you have born with us. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny's in Hamilton in South Atlantic. So, Kenny, you don't think you should change. Tell Jim why you don't think you no, should change. I, all I was saying, uh, I only come on to hear uh, the programme about ten minutes ago, but listening to Jim, he was full of non-specific comments about men, very woolly, and there was nothing specific mentioned. as though he was steering away from saying this. Now, basically, as a man who... Uh, who treats people in a reasonable manner and is courteous to people, I wonder why, how, in what way I should change. He's got to be specific here. He's not got to give willy statements. Hello. Hello, Jim. Yeah. You want, you want specifics? Mm. Well, uh, first of all... We uh, all do, yeah. Um, that's a very rational sort of way of looking at masculinity as well, isn't it? When we try to talk about emotion and being on the same emotional wavelength of uh, kids and women and other men, really. 
And uh, I suppose what uh, I can only go by what other men tell me in groups. And those men tell me that uh, they want to be better dads. And that means being engaged emotionally with their children in a safe way, in a way that promotes parenting as opposed to um, father. I, I don't see a difference between fathers and mothers personally. It's parenting, really. You don't see any I, difference at all. I don't mm. see any difference. I, I, I can't think of um, many things that um, men can do that women can't and vice versa in terms of the parenting. My world. kids don't want to go to the shops with me because I don't like going to shops. They want to go to the shops with their mother because she likes going to shops. She likes looking at nice shoes and pretty dresses in shops. I don't. Yeah. And my okay. daughters well, want to put go her with in contact her. with Julie Bindle and B. Campbell and uh, <laughs> see if we can work something out for you. I, 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 I'm not uh, perhaps, <laughs> Nikki, uh, maybe we could take you on a, a little walk down the shops to help you promote the <laughs> idea that shopping isn't all bad. I I, yeah, shopping for CDs is great. Shopping for books is fantastic. But I'm not. Why is that? Is that my social conditioning? Um, you tell me. I don't I'm, know you tell me. You. No. Say. No. You tell as me. A general, look, as a generalisation, uh, we are socially conditioned, and um, uh, boys are more socially conditioned not to show emotion. Uh, I show emotion all the time. I can't go into the overture of the sound of music without reaching for a box of hankies. Graham in Uxbridge. Good morning, Graham. Good morning, Nicky. On Radio 5 Live or something. Hang on. <laughs> Graham, <laughs> Graham, Graham, speak to Jim. Hi. Great, speak to Jim. Jim, Graham, Graham, Jim. Hi, Hello, Jim. Graham. Uh, my point is, um, I'm a 48-year-old father. I have two grown-up children. For the past, for all their life, I've been in the armed forces. Um, my point is, Fathers, the overwhelming majority of fathers would love to spend more time at home with their children. However, and no more pertinent than it is today, we have economic pressures to make sure that our children are provided for. And so we, as fathers, have to try and do this. And unfortunately, that takes us away. Do you understand? Uh, yeah, I do understand that. Um, maybe you need to get um, a different job or could have got a different job, but more importantly, uh, we always need more money, don't we? We always need more money to consume, to look after our kids. It's remarkable how little we actually need to be able to stay at home and be a parent, actually. Oh, okay. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, you, you know, uh, anything of, of you as a father or anything like that, but as a generalisation, men find it very problematic trying to get time off work trying to get home to pick kids up from school, trying to take kids to school. Uh, but somehow, uh, women who work as well don't seem to have that sort of problem. Oh, well, I, again, I will disagree with that because, uh, and maybe it was just my where I work, but I do know in other um, aspects of uh, employment, women do tend to get a bit more flexibility. They don't really do in the, in the, in the British forces. Uh, to help look after their children, which they should. But uh, the, the, the comment of get another job, that doesn't, that doesn't work because uh, I'm not just talking about my job, I'm talking about men all over England, all over Great Britain. They yeah. all have pressures put upon them to work those extra hours to, to put a roof over the head of their children. And that is okay. what we are, as men are designed to do. Well, I'm, I'm suggesting to you that we ne maybe need to challenge some of those issues. I had a bloke who uh, used to talk to me in a group about wanting to get home early enough to be able to uh, see his kids at tea time. And what happened to him, he had to walk down this aisle to the door, and when he opened the door to go out, it squeaked, and everybody looked up and saw he was leaving early. The culture of that place was workaholism. His remedy was to bring a can of oil in and to oil the door so when he went out, Good people idea. wouldn't look up. It's absolutely absurd. Men have got to think about being there. That's the first point. Be there. Uh, you know, we can do it, and but we also put arguments in the way. And also, a lot of men have jobs that take him away from home. Jim, that's it. We're out of time. Listen, it's been a great pleasure. Have a, have a good weekend, OK? Cheers. Bye y now. You've really got us thinking this morning. Thank you for that.